Welcome to another Vinius video, this time looking at Germany and the wine regions of Germany. So we're going to focus on the Rheinhessen. This very closely follows the WSET Level 4 Diploma Syllabus. So it's fantastic for those of you studying, but also for those of you very much interested about this specific topic, which is the wine growing area of the Rheinhessen. So yes, we're in series three of wine regions, and we have a 10-part thriller on all of the wine regions of Germany, starting with this one, of course. This video, part two and three, are available as free content, but parts four through to 10 are available only to subscribers of my e-learning portal. That's over at www.winewithjimmy.com. If you do have any comments or questions, Get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. Have you been to Rheinhessen? Have you tasted the wines of this area? Have you tried some of the great producers like Weingut Keller, for example? So without further ado, let's get into the nitty gritty of the Rheinhessen region. So the principal wine producing regions in Germany, which we call the Aumbaugabite, are as follows. And you'll see them up here. Now, we're going to actually go through our presentations, so this video all the way to 10, going from the largest producing area to the smallest. So we're beginning here, of course, with the Rheinhessen, you'll see, which produces somewhat around a third, maybe just a little bit less of a third of the total production or total vineyard area found in Germany. So the top four, which is Rheinhessen, uh, the Pfalz uh, here, sorry, and then Baden and the Württemberg area produce about 80% combined of the total production. So they're the big producers. So the overview of the Rheinhessen. So it's home to, of course, as I mentioned, nearly 30% of German vineyards. It's the largest in terms of production and the yields are amongst the highest in Germany. So here you'll see, um, there you go. So 26,000 out of 100,000, and this is 2020 figures. So you are looking at, okay, so about 26% uh, ish. And the yields, the, um, the, the production here is this, this uh, column. 84 is the kind of average hectoliters per hectare in German vineyards. And we have up towards 100 for the Rheinhessen. So bulk production here still dominates and plantings are still on the rise to supply it. The majority of this production is under the control of merchant houses. Quality wine production is dominated by small estates and a number of cooperatives. So the region is actually quite warm and dry, sheltered by various mountain ranges, including the, the Hunschruck and the Taunus. So you'll see here, this squiggly line is the Rhine. Okay, it's an old sort of more funny map, this one, but I quite like it because it's got the mountains on it. So Wiesbaden and Mainz are the cities here. So this is the Rhine Gau. But we're this area down here, you can see, this is the Rheinhessen. Now, just to the uh, west of this, you can see the Hunsruck, as you can see, is listed here. And to the north of that, you'll see it written here as the Taunus mountain range. So it gives you an idea that it's kind of like uh, on its western side and northern side, it's actually well hemmed in the Rheinhessen, giving it therefore more shelter against colder and wetter conditions. Now, the majority of the vineyards in Rheinhessen are planted on warm and fertile valley floors, which are, of course, ideal for the production of high volume, inexpensive wines. Remember, a historical medium sweet wine dating from the Victorian era kind of comes from this area. That's Liebfraumilch, originating from Worms in the southern Rheinhessen area. Great varieties in play here. So white grapes dominate the Rheinhessen with about 72% of plantings. Riesling is the most planted white grape variety, 
Uh, the total is about 18%, followed by Müller-Turgau at about 15%. Uh, then with the black grape varieties, Dornfelder leads uh, at about 12.5%. And that's actually um, more than double of Pinot Noir, which is often its kind of major competitor. Silvana and Pinot Gris are about 7 to 8% down uh, towards the bottom of the slide just there. So we talked about the majority of the Rhein-Hessen being on flatter, generally fertile areas for more inexpensive mass production. But there are parts of the Rhein-Hessen where we find much more higher quality production. And we have the long established Rhein-Terrasse, as you can see written here on the uh, top of your slide. There's a picture of kind of a central part of it here called the Nierstainer Brudersberg. And on the left is a map of this real eastern section of the Rheinhessen near Nierstein, Oppenheim, that kind of area. And this is the area we call the Rhein Terrasse. The, uh, the vineyards here are east facing. So they receive the warming, gentle morning sun in the coolest part of the day and enhancing gently the richness, but maintaining really bright acidities. The proximity to the Rhine River, which is clearly identified as its eastern boundary on that map, and you can see it in the picture, this means its moderating influence means that the evening and autumn uh, temperatures remain warmer than in the vineyard areas away from the river, and that further extends the ripening period. As a result, Rieslings from this area often show, yes, fresh compounds like uh, sort of uh, quite acidic lemon, but then slightly riper notes of peach, for example. There's also a specific part of the Rhine Terrasse we should talk about. Now, located within a vineyards uh, along a strip known as the Rotorhang, and that's around Nierstein and neighboring Nackenheim to the north. So you'll see here's Nierstein, there's Oppenheim. This stretch here to the north of Nierstein, then going along the Rhine, and that is towards Nackenheim, which is just off this uh, map. This is the strip that you call Rotahang. Now, it's distinguished by a soil which is called the Rotlingenden soil. You'll see I've highlighted it just here. Uh, this is an, an iron-rich red clay with slate and also sandstone. They say that Rieslings from the Rotterhang are said to uh, show these kind of smoky characteristics, potentially because of its terroir, but of course that is debatable. Then in the southern part of the region, vineyards in the Vonnegal area in the Rheinhessen are also gaining quite a solid reputation for high quality Riesling and Spätburgunder. These vineyards also benefit, uh, benefit from the moderating influence of the Rhine. Significant producers include Weingut Gondeloch and also uh, Weingut Keller, but Gondeloch is the Rheinteres and Keller is down in the southern section. They are very highly reputed wines from Keller and often classed as the best of Rheinhessen. So do look out for those. OK, let's have a look at Germany in terms of the Rheinhessen on this Google Earth video. First of all, identifying the Rhine River, one of the most important river networks within Germany. Then, of course, the Rheinhessen sitting on it. This is about 25% of Germany's production, high yielding area, and buffered by the Hunsruck Mountains to the west and the Taunus Mountains to the north. We're going to focus on the city of Nierstein and then what's around it. So this is in the eastern section. We have an area called the Rhein Terrasse, which is a long established area east facing which sits, of course, beautifully poised on the Rhine River. And that's between Oppenheim, Nierstein, and above towards Mackenheim as well. So this area, you get a great feel for it here. Um, it's east facing, it gets the morning sun, so a gentle ripening. 
The Rhine also gives a big moderating effect here. So generally, the Rhine terrace Rieslings are much more riper in style, showing these kind of stone fruit and slight bit more sweetness and honey to them. We then have another sort of sub area called the Rotter Hang. You see it just here. Very well reputed, has the Rotlingenden soil, which is iron rich slate with clay and sandstone, making some fabulous wine styles as we head towards Nackenheim. Then finally, in the southern section, the Vonnegal area, historically known for some more bulk, is building a reputation for very high quality Riesling and Schwabburgunder, specifically because you have Weingutkeller in this area. So some wonderful expressions now being produced down there. There you are for your Google Earth video on the Rheinhessen. Well, that brings me to a conclusion of the Rheinhessen. Please do get in touch with your questions and comments. Have you visited the likes of Gundeloch or Keller? Have you been to the Rhein Terrace? Have you been to Rhein Hessen? Do you like the wines of this area? Let me know, please. If you do have any further questions, get in touch. And remember, if you want access to the full series, you'll need to go along to winewithjimmy.com to get full access of subscription. Uh, until next time, I've been Jimmy Smith. Thank you very much. Goodbye.